This is Mitchell Zoller from Elsevier Global Medical News. I'm reporting in Philadelphia from the annual meeting of the American College of Chest Physicians. I'm speaking to Dr. David Sachs, who's director of the Palo Alto Center for Pulmonary Disease Prevention in Palo Alto, California. Dr. Sachs, could you um, explain why you think there was this uh, trend toward um, significantly higher dependence levels uh, over that 17-year period, period that you looked at? Yes, I think the explanation is that the low-hanging fruit has literally gone out of the population pool. People who either have no physical dependence on nicotine, maybe 10 to 20 percent of the cigarette-using population can stop whenever they want to, and they don't experience nicotine withdrawal symptoms, whereas people with a higher level of nicotine dependence, when they try to stop cold turkey or with over-the-counter aids only, find themselves in severe nicotine withdrawal, can't do their work properly, are moody, short-tempered, and so on. But people at the low physical dependency end of the spectrum, with scores of one or two points, for example, those people can probably stop cigarette use with a minimal amount of disruption in their lives from nicotine withdrawal symptoms and the symptoms don't last very long. So what we're left with then is a self-selected population of people who want to stop smoking. Studies, CDC surveys consistently show 70% of all cigarette users want to stop smoking. Yeah. They don't want to continue smoking. They try and they can't. And literally the apocryphal story of the wife saying, honey, I'm delighted you stopped smoking, but you're impossible to live with, so please go back to smoking. A better solution would be, please go see a physician who knows how to treat tobacco dependence well. Yes. And um, you emphasized in your talk the importance of the uh, Fagerstrom tolerance questionnaire as a way to very clearly quantify for individual patients their level of dependence. So. You're, you're talking about having more patients at a high level of dependence. The, this score is on a scale of 0 to 11. Patients with a score, say, of 10 or 11, um, you were saying that they would probably need a multi-pronged approach to treatment, and that would consist of what, perhaps? Yes, they would need a multi-pronged treatment uh, approach because what you really have to do for them is give them adequate dosages and combinations of medication so that their nicotine withdrawal symptoms are suppressed. Or as I state to patients, you feel normal for you. But typically, what I'm seeing now and other clinicians who treat a lot of patients with tobacco dependence, such as myself, uh, have found is that uh, these highly nicotine dependent people with scores of 10 points, for example, are going to need an average of three step one patches that they're applying every morning simultaneously. Now that's an average. Some people don't need that much, some people need more. Plus they need to use nicotine rescue medications such as nicotine nasal spray, nicotine oral inhaler, um, nicotine gum, nicotine polyquil exlogenous, so that they have a way of handling breakthrough withdrawal symptoms typically that come under times of stress. When uh, were they still smoking, they would quickly go and have one or two cigarettes, which gives them a huge nicotine boost to the brain that upregulates all these wonderful neurotransmitters like dopamine and, and beta endorphin and, and uh, so on. Um, and we can accomplish a lot of that, not as fast and not, not with as high uh, response rate uh, in terms of upregulation of neurotransmitters, but we can accomplish a lot of that with, with the medications that we have available. Right.